was going to say, just real quick, I think the only way the scene could have been better if Aaron was like, you know what, Connie? I love you, bro. You can't, you can't have the Titan. He's like, Sasha, you too. You're <laughs> awesome. He's like, Armin Mikasa. It goes without saying. And he's like, Sean, I just got one thing to say to you. Just pulls out a knife and stabs him in the stomach. He's like, bro, I always hated you. <laughs> stab, stab. And then, uh, this is back for scout you know, training. <laughs> yep. Yep. Oh, that's all I gotta say. All right. Anyways, oh, uh, back to man. you. What's up, everyone? Welcome to Sasaka Yo Sundays. On this show, we'll be discussing the final season of Tech on Titan. I'm your host, David, and joining today we have Taylor. Hello. Next up, we have Justin. Hey guys. Next up, we have Ku. <clears throat> hello. And finally, we have Sasha. Hello, hello. <laughs> and guest appearances by Stren. Thanks, man. All right. Oh, it feels nice to be recognized. <laughs> yes, of course. So I don't really remember much from this episode. I feel like nothing really happened. <laughs> And so many. Oh my god! Oh my god! Oh my god. Sorry, god. sorry, ass. That, that's exactly. So, so what happened, and what's important? Let me know. All right, let, let's go to our official AOT expert panel. Taylor and Justin, would you please kick us Justin, off? Justin, you're so manner? good at summarizing things. No, I can hop in. I... <laughs> if I must. Okay. Um. So. This episode was a bit interesting in the sense of we had a lot of information happening across both two years prior to the, you know, Marley attack, which we just saw earlier in the season here. And then we also had a time skip to like one year earlier. Um, but basically this week's episode uh, started off with Aaron, you know, talking to himself in the like basement prison that he's currently in, staring into the mirror saying, you know, fight, tatake, tatake over and over but this time we notice that hanji is actually down there with him and she kind of you know comes up there and she's like well, who are you talking to like why are you saying fight like more than once like actually, what really type like, of two love, fights love that scene <laughs> just yeah no it's Kanji it's a great scene, out. <laughs> yeah and it, it totally fits to you know hanji as well of just like kind of always in people's business and just like kind of like it's really quirky, I guess, kind of to her, like, scientific nature. Um, but I think the main takeaway that from that interaction was we get Hanji asking Aaron, like, why he did, you know, what he did. Why did he go to Marley by himself? And Aaron kind of, you know, kind of flies off the handle where he's like, you know, I had to do what nobody else was willing to do. And he gets, like, yes. really, like, vocal with Hanji and, like, um, really just up in her face. Yeah, exactly, too. Um, Subarashi. and so that kind of develops further into Hanji being like, you know, like what happened to you, Aaron? Like what changed? Like, I remember back when you were younger, like, you know, we would spend the nights outside together and I'd be talking to you about Titans for hours. And, you know, she kind of admittedly says like, I don't know if you were listening cause you never, you know, said anything, but you would at least put up like with my stories and stuff. Um, which again, you know, typical to Hanji's character of just being like really passionate about mm -hmm. Titans and, and those kind of areas. Um, but the last piece that I'll touch upon there is that um, with Aaron being like very vocal and like all up in Hanji's business, we get this um, really kind of perspective of Aaron where he is going to continue to do what he wants to do regardless of what anyone says. And he specifically touches upon like, hey, I have the Warhammer Titan now. Like I can basically like transform anywhere. And it's like this prison isn't keeping me in. I'm just choosing to stay here. So it's a really powerful scene where, you know, he's just showing like there's nothing you guys can do to stop me. Like I'm going to do what I'm going to do at the end of the day. And then specifically, we have that one scene where um, when Aaron's kind of at this peak like anger, he almost, you know, turns into a titan with how pissed off he is at hanji and like questioning him and his like modes of um execution for how they move forward um and then apart from that uh we transfer into um the azumabito clan arriving so that's the clan from um from, what is from japan made up japan yeah i was gonna say yeah, oh, yeah or something. <laughs> exactly um yeah the mizuru clan um and through that series of events you know that the reason that they show up is that um through yelena and some of the other um supporters that defected from marley they had finished building the port in paradise 
And so um, the Mizuru clan and the Azumavitos, they're like the one last country that doesn't like absolutely hate parodies like everybody else in the world and, and fears them. Um, but basically they show up, they kind of allude to, you know, they've been filled in on Zeke's plan and what he thinks they need to do to um, basically establish dominance in the world again. And they kind of touch upon, you know, the rumbling, which involves both the founding Titan and the individual of royal blood. But more interestingly, the big thing that we learned from this Mizuru clan is that Mikasa is actually the heir or like royalty to them. And she shows um, the yes. tattoo of the three yes. swords that she has. Um, and I don't know, for, for anime onlys, was that something that was like surprising for you guys? Did you like that reveal? Did you feel kind of like, oh, this is a very convenient thing? It felt like, convenient, thing? yes. Like, because we already have Historia being a royal, we have Zeke being a royal. It's like, well, why not just have another royal while we're at it? <laughs> right. Um, yeah, and it's something... I, it, yeah, go ahead, Sasha. I, was, I just think the context was not provided by the anime because apparently in the manga the symbol was shown on her wrist and then it was covered up and you're given that information in terms of okay there's something about the symbol but she's just keeping it covered up whereas in the anime right they just showed her like knitting or whatever it was with her mom and they don't really mention it ever again so if we had had that context with being anime only i think that moment becomes like whoa this is a flashback all the way or a drawback all the way to you know five six years ago but now it's just kind of it, it felt awkward, like David said, like almost cheapened. Um, so I, th I think the context could have been pulled off a lot better for anime only. Well, and that thing too is like the royalty it gives them like leverage over like the the not Japan country. So it's like it just gives them almost like a freebie, basically. We'll see. Yeah, I, I think even something as like a, a manga reader is definitely something that I won't say I was like really really disappointed with but it did just feel really convenient even as a manga reader at the end of the day of like oh hey you have the you know the three main trios aaron is basically thanos who can just collect them all and you know go on this war path of destruction and then now you have mikasa who already has you know this um illustrious ackerman blood that we still don't know kind of like the full background behind and then now you know she's also royalty of this like very kind of like isolated like japanese country and it's just very convenient that all of these things continue to to fall into place for the main like characters that aaron surrounds himself with it's um, interesting i actually that never bothered me at all and i didn't really read it as royalty from what i understood she was just like the last surviving member in paradise and so she was like a person of interest but they didn't she, say she was royalty she's a director from the sh like the sh they call it the shogunate basically like the ruling leader the ruling yeah. clan like uh japan basically so almost like royalty or it's like like it's like military family so it's just still important yeah she's important but i didn't really think it was quite the same as like historia becoming queen i, I it didn't really have the same impact for me and i didn't really like um compare them with each other like on a similar I, level personally i think you, I don't, yeah i don't think you get it sounds like she got any powers from being descended. it's just like it's just the title so it's just like mm -hmm. getting mm -hmm. being the title yeah yeah, right. and I guess, if anything, it, it gives more kind of bargaining power now between Paradis and uh, the Mizuru or Azumabito clan. So that kind of helps out in their favor in that sense. Um, but apart from there, uh, Kiyomi from the Azumabito clan, who, you know, we know from earlier this season when yeah. she had visited uh, Willy in Marley and kind of, you know, left so, it right like, before everything went down. Someone, like, guessed about that, too, that she was looking for. I, I want to say it's Sash. Sasha guessed it. I think it was Sasha. Yeah, someone, yeah. So I'm going to shout out to whoever guessed that, it. Yeah. I, I knew she was suspicious. I don't think I knew she was an informant, but I knew for, for like, I my instinct was she was going to be Warhammer or there's something fishy about her because they, you know, they show who was it? Ku always mentions the loose ends. And mm -hmm. they had a specific, like, scene of her being at that little gathering and then being like, yes, yes, I must go now. Goodbye, goodbye. So that's what's up, man. You just got to, you know, potato. Potato it is. Yes. And we will get to potatoes later in this episode as we saw from flashbacks. Um, but before we get there, uh, the only other two pieces that I wanted to talk about um, or summarize in kind of like this meeting between the Osmovito clan and the Paradis um, kind of faction is 
We also get insight into the meeting between Zeke and Kiyomi and where um, Zeke kind of, you know, lays his cards on the table of like, hey, this is what I know about Paradis. This is what I know about, you know, this rumbling um, ability. Uh, but more so, he reveals to Kiyomi the 3D dimensional gear or the ODM gear. And it was really interesting to see the shock on Kiyomi's face. Um, and it was something that when I was talking to a friend, he was kind of interested in understanding like, well, how did Kiyomi potentially know like about the ODM gear? Like, did it basically entail that maybe um, Kiyomi had already planted spies in Marley that had like figured out that they knew? Or I don't know, because they directly focused on her face, kind of like a shock. Oh, yeah, that's what I was thinking. It. Yeah, I was thinking long lines of like, was was like, was Mikasa's ancestors, like the Japanese side, were they involved in making the gear in the first place? Was it like passed from like yeah. some sort of like like Japanese That's tech a or something? Big guess. And, because and I can't remember if they ever explained that in the manga, but I know there is a spin-off manga called Attack on Titan before the fall, and they kind of allude to the creation of the one dimensional gear in that manga. But I don't know if that's directly canon or not. Because because I don't think because it sounds like the gear it was only made in Paradise. I don't think it was made in Marley, was it? Or am I getting that wrong? Uh, no, I don't think so. Yeah. So then, just in um, Paradise. Yeah. so it's yeah. just Paradise, and like then they shouldn't have known. Well, and there should be no outside contact. So that's I'm that's why I'm thinking maybe uh, it was some sort of Japanese tech. Yeah. So oh. that definitely could be one thing. maybe also that's um, why they want like the, the that resource like the gas you use for the gear oh maybe, maybe the ice why, burst stone maybe yeah. that's why they know how, how valuable it is because they understand the tech and that's why they want to monopolize it yeah and that could be the reason of the whole background of like how the osmobitos and the fritz family kind of like you know decided to form a pact with each other back in the day because they realized how valuable um, that ice burst mineral is because it only is found on Paradis. Uh, and then as they kind of believe it, betray Paradis, and they become known as the Azamachito family. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. It kind of reminds yeah, me yeah. um, Code Geass, where like they have a made up like metal or material that's like only found in the Dear Pacific like country, like the the Sakura, uh, right? Whatever. In Code yeah. Geass, it reminds me of that. Like we're like the, the best same... material is from uh, the Avatar movie, Unobtainium. I think it's what they called it. Unobtainium. <laughs> it's like, yeah, yeah, it's like lacking so much creativity, but just to give like this wow. grandiose, like, oh, of course, this you know one distinct area has this resource that can solve all these issues or problems, and this is how it's found. Um, just by that name but... alone, I would not want to get that. I'm like, no, nah, I'll pass. You take that. <laughs> this is my cousin Billy. Um, he took it. <laughs> but the other thing I have to give a shout out to you for, Sasha, of sharing, you know, that one YouTube breakdown of this week's episode is I had totally forgot that the reason that Zeke has that um, 3D gear is because uh, in season two, if you all remember when he ran into Mike, one of the, the scout troops, he had killed Mike and took the 3D gear. Oh, I remember him. that part. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, and I, co I completely forgot item. about that. Yeah, I, I, cause I thought I remember that part too. Is he was it season two? I thought he was gonna like, use it to like mm -hmm. as a way to like, to uh, sabotage all the scouts way back when we thought it was just about fighting titans. <laughs> yeah. So that was something admittedly I had completely forgotten. So thank you, Sasha, for passing that along and you know making me look no as though I don't know as much as I do as a manga reader. So I need to step That's my right, game your up. Face, manga reader, <laughs> your face. <laughs> Anime oldies for life. No, I'm just joking. Yeah, that was actually really cool because I remember just being horrified when that happened. Because Mike, he was the guy who sniffed people, and I was like, "Oh man, this guy's you know like the cool side character, kind of creepy but kind of funny at the same time." I wouldn't mind watching him develop a little bit more. Oh my god, he's getting squeezed <laughs> to death by a giant monkey. Ah! Yeah, dude. dude, Zeke's yeah. B side was so freaky the first time you saw it. Like, dude, it's still freaky, man. Look at that. I mean, is so... that thing popping your shower? Yep. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Oh, man. I don't know why but there. um, why just yeah. Otherwise, the the last piece <laughs> of kind of the meeting between the Azumavitos and Paradis would just be we now see this conflict of through Zeke's plan, they basically want to use Historia to one inherit the Titan uh, from Zeke, which as we know, you know, inheriting a Titan limits your lifespan to thirteen years. And then the second piece is that because they need this royal blood to continue onwards, 
Uh, Historia basically has to be a baby pumping machine. And then, you know, in terms of keeping that beast Titan within the family, basically Historia's ancestors are going to do the same thing that uh, Rod Reese and who was trying to do the Historia is this, you know, family members continuing to eat family members to retain uh, both the founding Titan and other Titan powers. So um, that was something that I think we see the conflict where Historia is kind of down to do it. Like she obviously doesn't want to do it, but she is admittedly like kind of leaning towards that route. But then you have Aaron who is, you know, again, visibly pissed off and does not want to do that. I think he mentions the part of like, what's the point of us, you know, following Zeke's plan if we're not going to become free even after that? Like, yes, we can use this power to, you know, strike terror into the rest of the world. But at the end of the day, like we're still cattle. So in Aaron's mind, that's not true freedom of what he's trying to accomplish. Uh, just remember like any signs or episodes that focuses on Aaron's and Historia's relationship. Are they just friends, or why is he so hell bent mm -hmm. on protecting her? Uh, well, I would say that I think that it's because of like more so what she represents, which is like, mm -hmm. like, like basically, like his tenant that he believes in is is freedom, and so mm -hmm. by basically shackling her to having to be a baby pumping machine, I think is what Justin called it. Yes, um, <laughs> they're basically <laughs> taking away her freedom. That's how I see it so far. Hmm. I thought he was yeah. friends, yeah. Like he treats her yeah. like, like like Connie and Sasha and and John. Yeah, that's because they're all in the original scouts. Yeah, but she so. means a lot more in the long run to the Eldian people and she like, does, the history too. that she carries with her. There's a yeah. huge weight to that. So well, I think the big thing is like the fact that she's royalty is that she's yeah. probably breaking the cycle as royalty. Like he Aaron has so much faith in her that she won't repeat kind of what the fritz family was doing in the past but all oh, right there was that one part well when they when aaron got did get kidnapped and i think they were trying to feed aaron to historia whatever i think yep there's that part where yeah. like where aaron that's when he was like really like desperate I, th I think he was like he didn't want anything to do anymore and, and historia basically had to like had to be the one to like to save him yeah, I totally okay. forgot about that, like how emotionally devastated he was for like everything that he kind of done up to that point. He was just begging like Historia to eat him. Oh, OK. So, so maybe, no, it's just, it just feels maybe, like... maybe it's like he's trying to return a favor to her. Yeah. No, it just feels like he cares more about Historia than he does about like Mikasa uh, and Armin, which is kind of weird because like they grew up together. Um, I think that's just because of what the plot's focusing on right now. Right. Yeah, I guess. Yeah, same. Like, if Mikasa and Armin die, yeah, it'll be bad. But mm -hmm. the queen has that pure bloodline that they need in order to continue um, yeah. and, right, and fight for their freedom. Because I think what's coming up is the idea that to hearken back to the beginning of the episode, I think why Aaron is just on the edge is because of the limited time he has left. And I think he realizes that more so than anybody else because he has mm -hmm. these memories. He's lived through a lot already. And nobody else seems to get that. Like, nobody else is like, you know, this guy, he, he might have PTSD and might be struggling with a lot, but he also has like two years left in his life. So uh, he's probably trying to get a sense of urgency here, which is why I think he's cutting corners with everybody. But to go back to Historia, I think he sees like, you know what? We have very limited options. And if she's our only way out to build a brighter future, unfortunately, she's going to have to be that ultimate sacrifice. Whereas, you know, you can't have Armin or Mikasa replace her, which is why I think that bond is there for him because in a nutshell, she represents the entire future of their people. Definitely. Yeah. Mm -hmm. How much, um, I was ask, like how much time does, cause how much time does both Aaron and Zeke have? Cause I keep forgetting like with these flashbacks, like I guess like in the present time, yeah. like, so Aaron has what, yeah, it two is years? confusing. I'm not gonna lie. I think so three years left. Time it's got to be like yeah. two, three years. Two, I think yeah. it's two or three because yeah. they talked yeah. about it. I and mean, we'll get to it later when they talk about in the back of the train, like who's going to inherit Aaron's Titan. Um, mm -hmm. Yep. I think he said like three years or something. And you figure that was from roughly a year before the Marley invasion. Okay. So then what about, so, what about Zeke? Is he like the same time as Aaron or is he like, is he like a little bit earlier or? It might be a little bit earlier because obviously we see this like concern and because Zeke's the one that is very vocal of like, hey, like someone needs to inherit my beast titan and it needs to be, you know, Historia to continue that royal yeah. bloodline. So I would say he probably has like a year or maybe even less. Yeah, I would agree with that. That sounds right. Um, 
So quick and question then, for yeah. our panel. Uh, who do you guys predict is Historia's partner? Isn't Farmer Farm the farm <laughs> guy they show the random the random basically? Bro, you think you think it's gonna be a random? I don't, I don't think it's. I think my money is on John. I'm putting in my bet right now. John, Farmer Boy is John. John feels I, like the ultimate. Like I had things twisted. I want to make amends for it. So I'd go to you know an orphanage and help out Historia and be like, "Yo, yeah. this is the sacrifice I could make because I can't become a titan right now, but I'll at least do this." So that's what I feel like is coming from John. Uh, well, you know, honestly, I think it might just be Aaron just because I thought that maybe there was some kind of romantic interest that they had with each other because I don't really because I'm missing like what half of season two and then season oh, three and yeah. part season three. So I'm not really sure what the relationship <laughs> was, but with how adamant he is on like protecting her, I kind of assume it's Aaron. And when he mentioned earlier on that wagon ride that he didn't want any of those guys to inherit the Titan. I figure, you know, if you're if you're pumping babies and you have like royal blood, I might as well just, you know, be your baby daddy and then hope that <laughs> the kids have the founding blood or the founding titan and they have the blood, so it kind of like meshes well together. Um, that's what I was thinking. And I used to think it was farmer boy, but when I was looking at the uh like the face that Historia was showing when she met up with the farmer boy again, she didn't seem that great to meet up with the guy, you know. Well, so okay. I don't really think that's going if to it happen. was farm boy. I don't think I think she's doing just because like because they mentioned too. I think like if um if she's pregnant, she can't really inherit the, the beast titan just yet because there's mm. too much risk. So I think I think they're saying like Yelena told her that like she could get pregnant to delay like Zeke's plan a little bit. Yeah. Until like Aaron messed it up or something. So. Mm -hmm. And so that you know transitions us really well into the next part of this episode where we do see that conversation between the upper like military brass where you know they're drinking a lot of this wine they're having a good time but they're morely more so you know further honing in on the conflict now of like okay are we gonna go with zeke's plan and agree to what the azamabito clan wants to do or you know are people trying to throw wrenches into the plan you know we have aaron going off on his own agenda we have yelena as you just mentioned david potentially trying to get um that transfer of Zeke's power delayed because Yelena doesn't want Zeke to die at the end of the day since she idolizes him so much. Um, but the other thing that we get insight into and kind of is like a, um, what's the word I want to use? Kind of like a teaser of potential things to come or that they focus directly on. Yeah, mm -hmm. foreshadowing. Thank you. Um, is with the uh, wine when they, you know, yes. yell at the Marleyan um, servant, like, hey, bring us more wine. And then he goes down to the cellar and he's like, oh, Nicolo, like, which wine? Is it this one? And Nicolo's like, yes, this one. I was wondering if you were going to bring that up. <laughs> hey, yeah, fully pan away from it. So it's like, oh. Yeah, it's totally yeah. not going to be poison, guys. Come on. Totally <laughs> not. I was going to say, what do, you, what do you guys think? Oh, God. I, it well, I mean, sketchy, he was shaking but... it pretty much. Yeah, you know. You shake mm -hmm. that wine like that, I think you deserve to die. So, mm -hmm. um, yeah. yeah, you got to figure Nicolo's got not much to live for after what happened to Sasha. So, yeah. and when I was the reading the manga is... through those parts, I th that did not stand out to me as anything important at all. So, like to watch it in the anime where it's so obvious, I'm like, how did I miss this? <laughs> Same way, admittedly. So, <laughs> I guess with the animation, it makes it more easier to tell when they drop hints like that. Like, mm -hmm. like if you're just watching standstill shots in the manga, you probably won't notice hints because they they panned that shot for a couple seconds like more than necessary so it was yeah. clear it has like, like three three drop shot. dark shadows over everybody's faces just to give like this ominous like <laughs> dark like all right this is the one like you, you got it attention. Like... pay attention <laughs> yeah and nicolo's in the cellar i mean anytime you put a person in the cellar that's a oh yeah oh yeah just just down. because you know that's not where <laughs> the wine is being stored or anything <laughs> Oh, nah, quote nah, unquote nah. wine. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yeah, um, it's it's hard yeah, to say ahead. though who is behind this. And uh I mean, is it gonna be Yelena's crew? Is it Kiyomi? Like that's the thing I love about the show is there's so many things going on that you're like, hmm, I wonder who's working with who to set this up. But I honest, I have no idea, no crazy theory here. Yeah, I think that's one of the things I really enjoy about the later parts of Attack on Titan is you have a lot of different factions that have now come into play, whereas the beginning is always this really, like, you know, humans versus Titans. And then now it's just continually evolved into, I like, mean, multiple different, you know, countries and personal interests. I feel like, like the beginning is more, like, more of horror, like, horror, like, survival and stuff, like, just, and uh, the despair 
and when now and now like, as they get more power, it's I guess I have to balance with more of the the factions. Definitely. Yep. Um, and then the last uh, kind of two parts that we had in this episode is we had the one year flashback from the attack on Marley, um, which shows um, Aaron, John, Armin, Connie, the gang uh, building the railroad in Paradis. Um, and I thought that was a, a nice kind of like lighthearted addition of just one. Uh, we had the moment from Levi where Levi shows up and he's just like, I hate how tall you all you've gotten. And, you know, Levi just continues to be his yeah. short little. Short little five like <laughs> towering above him. <laughs> yep. <laughs> yep. Um, and the other cute part two, was uh, the other screenshot that I linked where um, Sasha was trying to drink like all the water that they had out there and like Armin is chasing after. And then it has that one screenshot where, you know, uh, Sasha is just like completely engorged with water and Armin's just kind of like face down, just like, fuck, like I couldn't <laughs> stop her. Um, so I thought that was, you know, cute and gave a, a, a further nod to Sasha fans after her, you know, unfortunate demise by uh, the one who shall not be named for a, well, there, a little there while. Was also, you. There was Thank also you. her little interaction with Connie, though, too, which I thought was pretty adorable. Them oh, yeah, basically just calling hilarious. each other idiots, like straight yeah, to their face. That was that so was good. <laughs> but this um, was this is actually one of my favorite scenes from the manga. I loved this scene. And it's pretty much the scene that, like, cemented in my head, like, for me, how why I care about Aaron as a character. Like it felt really important to me at the time. So I don't know. We'll see, but mm. it was Definitely. a nice break. Yeah. And I, I, think, I think it was really, Oh, go ahead, Sasha. I was going to say just real quick. I think the only way the scene could have been better. If Aaron was like, you know what, Connie, I love you, bro. You can't, you can't have the Titan. He's like, Sasha, you too. You're <laughs> awesome. He's like, Armin Mikasa. It goes without saying. And he's like, Sean, I just got one thing to say to you. Just pulls out a knife and stabs him in the stomach. He's like, bro, I always hated you. <laughs> stamp, stamp. And then uh, this is back for scout yep. training. <laughs> yep. Yep. Oh, God. That's all I got to say. All right. Anyways, oh, uh, back to man. you. But no, I, I, I think uh, I really enjoyed, you know, that scene as well. It really shows kind of the emotion that Aaron had or still has for um, the main kind of like survey corpse grew that he went through training and all these events with. Um, but then immediately, you know, after those scenes, we get the transition now back to current time where Mikasa, Jean, Connie, and Armin are sitting in the room talking about like what they're going to do with Aaron. Can Aaron be trusted? And, you know, Mikasa is yes. always as bay as you put it, Sasha. Um, you know, she's still in this mindset of like, Aaron's doing these things for a reason, guy. Like, we're fine. And, you know, Connie just comes completely, you know, in, in a rightful left field of just saying like, well, wh what about Sasha then? Like, you know, why was he laughing when he heard that she died? And we see that Mikasa's kind of like, oh, shit, like, I got nothing. And even, you know, John kind of does a little stare away of like, yeah, I can't, I can't help you in this one. Like, I'm all on board with Connie, so... So we a lot of tension. Base? Did we ever touch base I, on that when he did laugh at, at the episode? And seriously, I've always been confused about this like mysterious laugh because I hear people talk about it all the time. But like we had talked about how he remembered Sasha, you know, goofing off with like the meat stuff and how he was like laughing at that memory. In the yeah. anime, you don't see him laugh at all. And in the manga, Wait. he might. I think oh, is no, that. We see him we laugh do. in the anime. He does. When? Because I watched that scene like five he times. Asks Connie. Just, Oh, he's what, like Connie. What were her last words? And Connie was like, yeah. "Meat." And then right. he just yeah. looks. To, he's like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, 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 he has this maniacal yeah. laugh yeah. because, like Joker you know, and 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 it's totally you know um, warranted from Connie because from that perspective, and I'm sure you know he didn't talk further of, with Aaron of like, why the fuck were you laughing? Because mm -hmm. Aaron just finds it funny of like, you know, the results of his action resulted in you know this girl's death who just wanted to be free and enjoy like you know the bounty of a normal life you know a farm life and so i think you know obviously aaron didn't intend for it to come out that way but when you have you know him the way he is and obviously not disclosing a lot of his thoughts to his quote-unquote you know friends then i can totally see why connie's just like yeah fuck him like he gave no shits about what he did and how it resulted in uh sasha's death yeah, yeah. And then, I think from no, Connie's perspective. Oh, go ahead, Koo. No, 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 no. Go ahead. Go ahead. I was gonna say from Connie's perspective, you know, it, it's hard to see and justify any type of laughter, especially in a situation where the person you cared about the most, I would argue, has just died in a brutal fashion. Whereas I think from Aaron's perspective, what we're seeing is 
you're seeing the weight of all the memories he just absorbed from what's her face, um, nun sister lady, uh, Warhammer Titan. Plus, oh, mm. the fact that he's had to do all this on his own, he's been having salami legs for God knows how long. And I think what had happened, my personal take on it, is he wanted a positive memory of her. And so when he said meat, he's like, oh, that's ridiculous. That's just like Sasha. <laughs> but because, you know, he's tied up, he's missing his legs, or he was, and he's just been through the ringer, that came off more as just like a weird satanic laugh as opposed to, yeah, this is one last laugh and uh, of a good memory of, of a very close friend who just passed away as opposed to, yeah, I'm a sick and twisted creep who just, you know, randomly laughs at people's deaths. So I think it yeah. was misinterpreted because of the lack of context surrounding it. But uh, no, I, I get both sides. And that's what the show has done really well is show that at the end of the day, war is war. Like pick your side. But at the end of the day, both sides are going to have good and bad to them. Yeah, I think the other thing with Aaron is that, you know, since the very beginning and in, in typical, you know, shonen protagonist style, like he wants to achieve everything with no deaths. He wants to, you know, just be this uh, symbol of good towards, you know, getting this freedom. And I think specifically in that remembrance of Sasha, he really kind of remembers like the absurdity of what's going on and also the futility of like him trying to break this cycle and as we see, like, he's not, he's, he's just continuing in the same cycle that's been done for years and years. So it's really kind of just like this frustration of what he wanted to accomplish versus what's happening, even though he thought he was doing what was best at the end of the day. So, yeah. Um, other than that, I know we just ended off with uh, a quick snippet of Levi and Zeke in the forest. And Levi, again, just mad dog and Zeke like he wants to kill him if he does literally anything. If he breathes funny, like Levi's just looking for a reason to cut this man down. <laughs> so um, I think he's justified because Zeke was staring at that book like, yo, I'm expecting something to go down right about meow. And then, you know, that's right. Also when the he was looking like extra happened. cocky of just like, oh. Same kind of thing with with Aaron of like, you know, oh, you guys think like I'm trapped. This is my prison. It's like, haha, jokes on you. Like that's, you know, perception is not what you think potentially. So, by the way, I got we'll to put man Aaron as best form Aaron right now. It's like perfect sell. He's just looking that good. You know, like I, I think <laughs> flashback Aaron with his weird haircut where he kind of looks like Sasuke. Terrible. Worst Aaron ever. Um, oh, yeah. Original Aaron would be a tier above that. I think Keanu Reeves Aaron is second best but man man bun aaron like he could teach me yoga anytime <laughs> <laughs> what's well, even funny that you bring that up because i forgot that hanji actually mentions that when he first talks to aaron he's just like hey i really like what you're doing like with your hair like before like when you were looking like a hobo like that wasn't a good look man but this ponytail this man bun like that's what's yep. up oh. <laughs> he, he should have said like how could you see that with your one eye it was like, oh boops. <laughs> Oh, dang, bro. Too soon. Dang. Too soon. All right, guys. Yeah, too soon. Yeah. Too soon. Um, but yeah, the only other thing that I can think that uh, I didn't bring up yet is just that um, at the end of the train scene, they're talking about um, how the negotiations with the Ozma Bitos aren't really going well. Just depend uh, based on like the internal conflicts that they have, whether or not they want to agree to the terms. And then it kind of ends to the point where they're saying that, hey, like maybe we should establish like a base of recon in Marley. Um, so now we kind of have that like potential path now to explore further of like what happened in the one year between, you know, them potentially visiting Marley or some sorts of setting up this base of recon to when Aaron kind of just disappears and goes to Marley on his own. I feel like the base is a slavish, right? Because like Aaron was sending letters to somebody when he was in Marley, and he's not going to send the letters to Paragus. So maybe <laughs> the base is already established, and that's where he was sending the letters to. Yeah, maybe. could I be. Think I think it's that. something. Yeah, we'll have to see kind of what we what we get next here. But um, yeah, I think that's pretty much everything. Yeah, you covered yeah. everything very well. Yeah. You're the real MVP, Justin. I know, right? Thank no, you. Man, but hey. I have to again. Thanks, Sasha. He sent me this breakdown video on YouTube that, as an anime only, has no spoilers and does a great job of, you know, answering of like, okay, what time did this scene take place in? Okay, this is two years ago. This is one year ago. You know, what did they do differently from the manga versus anime? And completely spoiler free. So, hmm. okay. awesome. True yeah. that. I got you, bro. And as always, thanks, David, because 
I think you were gonna cover a lot, but you just you just you know to be humble, you let Justin take. <laughs> no, over. no, no. He carried my Always. sorry ass. <laughs> Although I was, uh, nah, nah, one, nah. I was gonna bring up one more thing, but um, because I think they're saying how like in the beginning, Aaron was just pissed about the rum the the plan, the roaming plan, because and the whole like mm. um using his story and whatever. But then like I think they were saying were they saying later that in the end like he, even though he was all against like Zeke's plan and. He ended up going with it anyways, and that's what all really just confused everyone. Like he just flipped on his his like what he was thinking. Is that is it that is that what I'm reading yeah. or? No, yeah. I think you're right, and I think it's because Aaron. Like I said, Aaron. It goes back to that conversation he had with Armin. Armin's like, maybe we could talk it out, guys. Hey, peace, peace. Change our image over time. And Aaron's like, we ain't got time for that, bro. They, we're gonna be demons forever if we do yeah. that. So I think he he's just saying like, listen. If we're going to do this, we got to do this right now. And the only way we can do this is by working with Zeke. So I think that's it's a tough predicament. These, that's the only valid option they have because everything else is going to take too long and they just don't have the time on their hands. Agreed. Yeah. I do kind of like how um, Isayama left this kind of ambiguous for the reader. Like, you kind of you can see that people are surprised that Aaron went back on his original intentions and stuff like that. He's going along with Zeke's plan, but like even even now we're all still like, is that really what's going on? Like I, I like the fact that he kind of like leaves us in the dark, really, from what Aaron what's going on in Aaron's head. They do yeah, a good I mean, job of it. I find it hard to believe that Aaron is going along. I think he has his own personal agenda, and he just makes him, he's just making people think he's going with Zeke's plan. Because I find it hard to believe that he would follow Zeke after everything that's that they've been through. Ooh. Like I still find it hard to believe that Zeke and them are actually like fully cooperating with each other and being completely transparent about everything. Because I'm pretty sure Zeke has his own like hidden agenda, and like I'm sure Aaron's got his own. Just like how the uh, the Japanese got their own hidden agenda as well. Uh, so I seriously doubt that everyone's just fully cooperating with each other. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a really good that, point. That too. I think that's also why. Like I'm just. Or at least most most people are just like we're confused about the situation, yeah, because it's not being transparent. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Plus, it Word makes it more count. epic, right? At the end, if it was like, oh my god, I like I wasn't following your plan. I was following my plan all along. You know, like I'm the big yeah. some forty. It's like chess. the the the, the Uno yeah. reverse card. It's just like, oh, I play this. He's like reverse, and it's like, no, 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 reverse. <laughs> so yeah. who can just outbrain the other? Because I want an <laughs> epic like. An epic plot twist. That's what I'm looking for. <laughs> Since it's the final oh, season. He wants like that the quadruple like agent or something. <laughs> like mm -hmm. watch. He's gonna shoot Aaron in the heart, and then the show's gonna like almost like go to blackout, fade to black. And then we see Zeke approach his body, and he takes off his glass, he goes, I'm soon of me. Goes goes to hunt down the, the ultimate treasure. crossover. <laughs> yes. Oh man. Oh god. All right. But yeah, another, you know episode in the book so to speak and we're you know getting closer and closer to the 16 episode mark so yeah. Six episodes be, yeah. left. interesting to see where we get to and i know i think we <laughs> talked about it on previous podcasts but especially with kind of what happened with the demon slayer movie do you guys all think that you know if they do continue it would sounds... you still want it to be potentially a movie or no are you I now more so like it needs to be a, a part two i always right? want no, tv series so but yeah, you know, we don't we don't always get what we want, so for the sake yeah. of the naming scheme, it better be a movie. Because if you make a final season part two, I'm gonna I'm gonna trip. Right? Hey, I mean <laughs> they yes. did it with Harry Listen, Potter, I'd rather it here. trips than all of us trip because we're waiting three years <laughs> to get no a movie. So. No, my opinions That's matter, right. okay? That's right. <laughs> yeah. So be the final no, that... season part two. It could be the final final season. Like, like yeah. come on. The final dude. season like, for really? real. Like, yeah. And then, the then, they'll, then they'll do a third <laughs> the final season. The final season for real this time. Director's edition. <laughs> I'll Dude, only be satisfied with that if, if like there was a translation error on a Japanese site and they didn't mean yes. final season. They meant something else, but the English uh, translator was like, you know what? Fuck it. Final season. Close enough. <laughs> like, that's the <laughs> only way I'll be okay with that. It's like that really lazy Japanese marketing that you see where they completely mess up English grammar. I could yeah. watch the next season will be called season final. <laughs> final season. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> it's called the end. Naruto. Oh, the last. Yeah. Until Boruto. Oh no. <laughs> oh God. Please no. 
All right. Yes. I think yeah. I think that's for uh, wrap it up here. It's a fun discussion. I didn't realize I didn't think we get this much. So yeah, shout out to everyone for caring. Yep. I thought this would be actually a shorter episode. So shout out to Hot Pockets for sponsoring this. Oh yes, 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 that too. All right, we're in here. And, Thanks uh, shout to, uh, to, uh, Ito. Shout out to shout out to Ulysses as well for the comment. Oh yeah, class for previous oh, week. Oh yeah, yeah Ulysses, Ulysses is always locking it down. Are they always locking it down? Sasha's Whoever you are, you team Ulysses. I'm I'm on that side. Sasha's bro. got your back with the man bun, Aaron. Yep, that's what's I got up. your back. That's what's up. The, I want to call them gun blades, but they're not. You know, I got your back with those. Okay, that's it nice. for that's yes. for now. We'll see you next time. Bye guys. Bye. Bye. Better, than Better than seven. All right, out. I wish I did not Google his artwork. All right. Not in disrespect to the skill level. In disrespect to the actual material that's being depicted. Yeah. Now I'm curious what popped up. Just just let me do Junji Ito artwork and uh oh boy. let's just say yeah. I want to crawl back to my basement. Oh, yikes. Okay. Let's just say him I, and uh I see nothing wrong here, bro. It's pretty normal. <laughs> yeah, totally, bro. <laughs> The cat's looking all right, you know. If you got some people... legs, then yeah, I agree. <laughs> yeah, man, Aaron would fit right in. <laughs> I could see this guy and that one guy, uh, the creator of uh, Made in Abyss, just having a party. <laughs> God.